In today's clip, I will take you step by step through how I took this reference image, which is available in the description below, to create this image using watercolour and colour pencils. I will show you the resources I used and I will take you through all the techniques I used to create this painting. So let's get on with the tutorial. When I first saw this photograph, I liked the photograph, but I thought the flower garland on the top of the model's head was too dominant. So I decided to try and create my own and I looked for some other garlands, couldn't find anything that was appropriate. So I decided to create my own using some flowers from an arrangement. I put this together in Photoshop and I'm pleased with the outcome. This is what I will use for my portrait. So before we start talking about the actual painting process, I'm going to talk briefly about the resources. I'm using hot press watercolour paper and I'm using two paint palettes. I will have a swatch of all the paints that I have listed on the left hand side. You could use just the Winsor & Newton Cot Cotman palette, however, I am using two palettes today because I find it much easier. Um, and the second palette that I'm using is a palette that I've recently reviewed called a Watercolour Confections Pastel Dreams palette. And that palette is very good for skin tones. I will also later be using white gouache when I am adding colour to the flowers. So the first layer that I am adding is the skin tones and I'm doing wet on wet technique. Then when I move on to the flowers, it is wet on dry because I'm adding more details and I want to have more control over the paint. And the reason that I am using white gouache when I am applying colour to the paint, the flowers, is because I want to have a variety of tones. And for the flowers, I am using Lilac Rain from the Watercolour Confections. I'm using Mo for the darker areas from the Winsor & Newton. And then for the really lighter areas, I have been mixing the white gouache in with the Lilac Rain just to get the lighter areas. What I've done is I've made the flowers much lighter on the right hand side of the garland rather than the left hand side of the garland because this gives the impression of the light source being on the right hand side of the model. So I'm now adding clean water to the face because I'm now going to add another layer of watercolour. In between this layer I have dried the watercolour paper and put it in a large pile of books in between another larger book to flatten the paper so that it's easier for painting the skin tones and we don't get puddles of watercolour paper. So I'm adding darker areas 
when you're painting with watercolour because the watercolour always dries lighter you need to start with your lighter colours and then build up dark so always start light and go in darker later so start with your lighter tones and then gradually build up to your darker tones so I'm now starting all those dark tones around the eyes and round to the lower areas of the face So now that I've added the main details to the face, I'm now going to add all of those leaves around the flowers on the garland. It's really important to add all of the different tones, that's how it will look realistic. So I'm starting to add the lighter tones with sap green and then for the darker leaves I will add a little bit of Payne's grey to the sap green and then gradually add more for the darker leaves. It's really important that as the leaves are underneath the flowers those are your darker ones because then that will give more of a 3D effect because it shows that they are the darker shadows. I am now going to add the drip effect that I like to add sometimes on my pictures and in order to do that I'm putting some colours that correspond with the colours that I'm using and complement them and I'm going to tip my picture up. Now you have to be really careful when you're doing this to try and control it as much as you can. I'm putting it on the outer edge. I decided to put it on after painting my flowers and sometimes do it before but today I decided to do it after so there is a risk of it going over the flowers. I want it to go over to some of it. Obviously I don't want it to go over the face so that's why it's really important that I do it on the left and right hand side and so that I make sure that it doesn't go on the face. So it's, you have to be really careful that you are confident with controlling it and sometimes you have to add additional water at the bottom to make sure that you get enough of a drip from your paint. So I'm now going to start adding more details to the work and the finishing touches and that will mainly be with colour pencil and the reason I use colour pencil is because sometimes it's difficult to get those really fine finished details with watercolour paint because you can't control watercolour paint so much. So I'm going around firstly around the hair, adding the tones and then I'll gradually go into the eyes and the mouth to add those finishing touches. If you enjoyed this clip then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour or portrait playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip and if you have any ideas for content or questions then leave a comment below. Finally don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content.